Okay. Good morning and uh, welcome everyone to BC 308, our course on Revelation. And Daniel, maybe I just <clears throat> looking at um, uh, the end time prophetic scriptures uh, from these two books of uh, Daniel and Revelation. And, and we will, of course, cross reference other texts and passages as well. So can we, uh, good morning, welcome, and let's just pray, and we will start. Kieran, can I ask you to pray, please, yes. so we can start? Yes, sir. Father God, we come before your throne one second. Thanking you, Father, for everything. Thanking you for the class. Thanking you for all the students, Father God. Father God, give your wisdom and knowledge, Father God, that we can understand the subject, Father God. Give revelation and understanding, Father God, to subject. Thank you, Father God, for everything. Almighty Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. All right. So last week, um, we were in um, chapters uh, 7 and then we went into chapter 8 of um, Daniel. Um, I'll just quickly review a few things, uh, which uh, just, to, just to refresh our memory. And then we will pick up where we stopped in chapter 8, finish that. And uh, my plan is, my hope is that today uh, we can cover cover that part, cover chapter nine, and also if we can go through chapter eleven. Uh, I know it's kind of pushing it, but my hope is if we can go through these chapters, we'll be good, and uh, we'll see if we can get to chapter twelve today, or we will get to chapter twelve next week. All right, so just to quickly review a few things from Daniel that we have covered so far. In Daniel chapter 2, uh, we had um, Nebuchadnezzar having his dream, and he saw the image, uh, where he saw this, this image of a man, but different portions, sections of the man was made of different uh, metals. And... Uh, head of gold, chest of bra silver, then waist of bronze, legs of iron, and feet. There was a mix of iron and clay, and from where it came, ten toes. And uh, it was in the time, so Daniel interprets it, says, look, these are, each of these are representing various kings and kingdoms. And uh, in the time of the final kingdom, which was represented represented by the feet, which was a mix of iron and clay, which was uh, meaning uh, this was loosely held, and part of it was from the legs of iron, the the king and the the kingdom that was the empire of the kingdom that was represented by the legs of iron now con continued into this fifth kingdom, which was a mix of iron and clay. And from there, there were 10 toes that emerged. And Daniel said, it, was in, it, was, it will be in the, in the times of those kings that God himself, the God of heaven, will set up a kingdom on the earth. Now, that is very interesting. Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter uh, 5, we see uh, a smaller uh, segment of prophecy by Daniel read the writing on the wall and he told uh, King Belshazzar was a grandson of King Nebuchadnezzar. It's the end of your kingdom and God is handing it over to the Medes and the Persians and uh, very powerfully that actually happened the same day. That same day the Medes and Persians came in over through uh, Belshazzar. He was killed and Darius was appointed the Darius was a Mede, um, was appointed in charge of that part of the kingdom by Cyrus, the king of Persia. And then 
uh, we come to chapter 7, where Daniel is recalling or retelling some of the visions he had in the past. So he tells us that uh, in Daniel chapter 7, in the first year of uh, King Belshazzar, he, Daniel has this vision where he sees four beasts come. So these are animal-like creatures emerging. And in chapter 7, so if you could turn with me to chapter 7, I'm just re reviewing this and, um, you know, if you have questions, if you need any clarity, please feel free to ask. Uh, in chapter 7, Daniel, chapter 7, he sees these four beasts come forth. And then he also sees, after these four beasts, uh, uh, the fourth beast, uh, and this is Daniel 7 and verse 7. Uh, uh, this fourth beast had 10 horns, 10 horns, Daniel 7 verse 7. So now this sounds very much like the 10 toes of Daniel chapter 2, right? There's, there's a parallel, some, some similarity here. And then he says, while he was thinking about it, another little horn, Daniel chapter 7 verse 8, a little horn came overthrew three of the first, the 10 horns, and it started speaking pomp, you know, boastful things. And then he saw verse nine, Daniel seven, verse nine, his vision shifts and he sees the ancient of days. So it's very much similar to Daniel chapter two, where he says, you know, I see 10 toes. And in the times of those kings, the God of heaven sets up his kingdom on the earth. Chapter 7, he sees the last beast, the bear. Out of that, uh, I mean, the, the fourth beast is very, not the bear, but a fourth beast, very uh, dreadful. And out of that fourth beast, Daniel 7, verse 7, come 10 horns. And then he's seeing something more. He sees another little horn coming up, which is speaking very boastful things. That was not so seen in chapter two, but now we're getting some more insight. And then he sees the ancient of days, Daniel 7 verse nine, and God sitting on the throne and the, the kingdoms being handed over to the son of man, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, Daniel 7 verse 13. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, he receives the kingdom. So there is a parallel to chapter two, but there is additional information, which is there is the little horn coming out. And then in chapter seven, Daniel is uh, also given the interpretation. Daniel seven verse 17, he says, you know, uh, the, the great beasts that you saw are actually kings kings and kingdoms that are coming out of the earth, right? So the four beasts in Daniel 7 map to the four kingdoms. And then uh, these, uh, he, 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 uh, we saw the mapping uh, in, in, the, in the picture that I showed you. It's in the PDF. And then he says, after that, the saints will be given the kingdom. So... Uh, uh, Daniel 7, verse 20, the 10 horns uh, uh, that came out of the fourth kingdom, fourth king or kingdom, the ten, there were 10 horns that came out of it, parallel to the 10 toes we saw in Daniel 2. And then there's another smaller horn that comes. And this same or, or the other horn or the little horn, verse 21, uh, it says it starts making war against the saints and prevails against them. Verse 22, until the ancient of days came and he made judgment in favor of the saints. So he's saying, you know, in the time we basically, when this little horn is doing his, you know, his aggression, his persecution, his uh, war against the saints, that is Daniel 7.21, the time of this little horn who is attacking the saints and that he's doing, he's attacking the saints. He's uh, really oppressing the saints until what happened? 
the ancient of days came. That means God himself stepped in and uh, established his kingdom. Right. So that was the additional information in chapter 7. This little horn that is troubling uh, the saints or is persecuting the saints and God sets up a kingdom. Okay. So uh, a little bit more additional information. I'm just highlighting these things in case we missed it in chapter 7. Uh, verse 24. Daniel 7.24. Uh, Daniel understands that the ten horns are ten kings who arise from this kingdom. From which kingdom? The fourth kingdom. So from that kingdom or from what belonged to that region, there are ten kings. Ten kings meaning ten leaders, people of influence, leaders. All right. Um, now, I remember in, in our uh, one of our, I think, uh, in, in another class, somebody asked, you know, how can we say that 10 kings map to uh, our political leaders today? Because, you know, uh, well, uh, the simple understanding is that's the language of the Bible, kings and kingdoms, but you translate it to our time, which is instead of kingdoms we have nations and instead of kings we have leaders political leaders or they could be called presidents or prime ministers or whatever other you know however the the government is established and so there is that connection and we see even in the new testament you know the new testament talks about slaves and masters we don't understand slaves and masters today we don't use that we talk about employees and employers or the New Testament talks about, uh, yeah, Romans 13 talks about um, being subjection to authorities. Now, the authorities in the Bible times had to do with the Roman emperor and uh, soldiers. Now, we don't have that today. Today we have governments and we have our civil authorities who enforce uh, the law in in the country, and we have to be in submission to them. So we, we, we translate that, right? So same way, going back to Daniel 7.24, where Daniel is talking about these, he says, the ten horns that you saw that, that came out of the fourth beast, they come out of the fourth kingdom. There are ten kings, ten leaders who are coming out. And then... After that will arise this, uh, this little horn who is going to subdue three of these leaders and he's going to speak these pompous words against God. He's going to, this is Daniel 7.25, he's going to persecute the saints and the saints will be given to his hand for a time, times and half a time. He said that's three and a half years. That means for three and a half years, God will let this man persecute his people. Right? So that is additional information. Okay. So let me just go share the PDF and just kind of explain this. I want uh, you to be very clear on this. That's why I'm uh, reviewing this Daniel 7. Right. So Daniel chapter 2, 7 and 8. Uh, we will get to, to 8. So in Daniel uh, two, uh, so Daniel chapter two, the head of gold, and this is the four beasts in Daniel chapter seven. So head of gold battles to the first beast, the um, silver chest battles the second beast, the Medo-Persian Empire, the waist and thighs of brass battles to the Greek Empire. The legs of iron paddles to the Rome, Roman Empire. Now, the Babylonian, the Medo-Persian, and the Greek empires are called by name in the book of Daniel. Right? We see this in chapter 8. The Roman Empire is not called by name, but we know because it was the empire that overtook, came right after the Greek Empire. 
we know that historically and that's why we are confident in saying and it was more it is very powerful over through every, all the others so we're confident that's the roman empire now what he, what we learn is from this region from what was the roman empire there's going to be a fifth kingdom which is a which is represented by the feet which is a loosely held collection of you know iron and clay pieces of iron and clay that means it's not uh, uh, as unified it's loosely held and out of that come the ten toes or the ten horns and then he explains to us that these ten horns are really ten kings right so that is something to keep in mind from chapter 7 that there's going to be a region that has this loosely held mix of iron and clay iron representing what belonged what was part of the roman empire clay representing all the other uh, peoples i mean not all but other peoples uh, uh, and they're a mix of that and then from there come the ten toes or the ten horns um, that uh, Daniel said are the kings or rulers uh, and there will come a little horn will overpower three of these ten horns and that's the time the God of heaven will intervene and God will give this little horn uh, three and a half years a time period of where he will pers persecute the saints so then we went into chapter 8. Uh, any questions uh, on chapter 7? I was just, I'm just reviewing some of the things we uh, saw from chapter 7. Any questions so far? Okay. So then we are, I'm reviewing now. I'll just go back uh, to chapter 8. So in chapter 8, <clears throat> Daniel uh, sees uh, uh, two very interesting animals. He uh, he sees um, the ram, uh, which represents the Medo Persian kingdom. Uh, the ram. He sees a ram uh, rising up from the east. So that's important. East, that's why we, you can say it's the Medes and the Persians. And it's also explained for us in chapter 8 and verse 20 that the ram represents the Medes and the Persians. And then it moves west. This ram has two horns. One is a small horn. Another one's a bigger horn. So the small horn uh, represents uh, the Medes. The bigger horn represents the Persians who are stronger. They came out later. Then, while this is happening, there's a goat that comes out of the West, which represents the Greek Empire. So the goat comes, and the goat begins to move east. That means it's going towards the ram. And it overpowers the ram. And in chapter 8, Daniel sees that this goat is moving very fast, and it has one horn, one horn. And so we know that this was uh, the first leader, Alexander the Great, uh, of the Greek Empire. And uh, again, we know this represents the Greek Empire because Daniel 8.21, he says, the male goat is the kingdom of Greece. So it's told clearly for us. The male goat is a kingdom of Greece. So Greece Empire comes, it moves very fast, expands very fast, overthrows the Medo Persian Empire. Um, its first leader, uh, represented by the first horn, uh, is growing very fast, but suddenly he is broken. The horn is broken. That means he dies. And sure enough, Alexander the Great, uh, he expanded his kingdom very fast, but he died at a very young age. And then his uh, four kingdoms was broken down into four regions. Now, you know, these countries that I've listed are not, not completely uh, 
uh, all the countries from those four regions. Uh, there would be Greece, and it would actually extend into Bulgaria and uh, modern day modern day Bulgaria and parts of Macedonia. So um, that's Greece and Turkey, uh, Syria and Egypt. Uh, but this generally the areas, the countries that were part of this four kingdoms. So what uh, um, Daniel chapter eight and verse eight, what Daniel saw is this male goat was growing very fast. Suddenly the horn was broken. And that empire, the large horn was broken, and instead of it, four notable ones came. That means this, this four leaders came. The kingdom was broken. And sure enough, when Alexander died, Alexander the Great died, uh, his kingdom was, or his empire was broken into four parts, um, uh, which were taken over by his um, uh, uh, generals for a period of time. Uh, and uh, then uh, after that came the Roman Empire, which covered all of these areas. So what is interesting in chapter 8 is, in chapter 8, verse 9, Daniel sees that out of one of these came a little horn. That means from these four portions of uh, the Greek Empire, which was broken, out of one of that came the little horn. So that's why we look at with interest um, the countries that, uh, the today's countries that kind of sit in these four regions. So we mentioned some of these names, Greece, Turkey, Syria, Egypt, but uh, like I mentioned, it could be more like Bulgaria, Macedonia, and uh, uh, you know a few other countries which actually sat in or which to today's con contemporary countries, which were part of those four regions into which the Greek empire was broken. So you look into that area with interest right? because Daniel 8 and verse nine says, out of them came this little horn that Daniel had spoken of in chapter seven. And we know he this little horn is the antichrist. So, um, he has given us that information, chapter 8, right? Now, um, so this little horn is going to, you know, uh, attack the people and he's going to oppose the daily sacrifices. So uh, this is chapter 8. If you will follow with me, uh, I'm looking at verse, chapter 8, verse 9. Uh, out of one of them came a little horn. That means out of one of these four portions of the, the broken Greek empire, came the little horn, chapter 8, verse 9, and who grew exceedingly, that means he became very powerful, and he grew toward the south, toward the east, and toward the glorious land. That means he began to extend his influence in, in different directions, towards the south, towards the east, and towards the glorious land. The glorious land, of course, is referring to the land of Israel. And verse 10 of Daniel chapter 8, this little horn uh, grew up to the host of heaven. That means it was just, you know, uh, boasting against God and the angels of God and um, uh, threw down uh, uh, some of these authority, some of the stars in the ground, trampled them. Verse 11, he exalted himself as high as the prince of the host. That means, you know, he's exalting himself against the Lord Jesus Christ himself, the Prince of the host. And by him, the daily sacrifices were taken away. The place of his sanctuary was cast down. That means he is, uh, you know, desecrating the temple. He's stopping all the sacrifices. And the sanctuary, the temple of God itself is cast down. Then verse 12, he says, uh, uh, because of the transgression, an army was given over to the horn to oppose the daily sacrifices and he cast truth down to the ground uh, and he did all this and prosper. That means, you know, with force, he stopped the sacrifices and threw truth down to the ground. Verse 13, then I heard a holy one speaking and another holy one said, so that the angels of God talking, how long will the vision be concerning the daily sacrifices 
and the transgression of desolation, the giving of both the sanctuary and the horse to be trampled underfoot. I mean, how long will this happen? Now, this phrase trampled underfoot is very interesting because you find it used in Revelation chapter 11 and verse, um, verse 1. So if you keep your hand in Daniel 8, go to Revelation chapter 11 and read verse 2, Revelation chapter 11 and verse 2. Uh, here he's talking about, uh, in John is having a, a vision. He says, in John's vision or revelation, it says, leave out the court which is outside the temple. Do not measure it, for it has been given to the Gentiles, and they will tread the holy city underfoot for 42 months. That is three and a half years. Right? So they are going, so that means this, the temple is going to be trampled underfoot for 42 months. Similar language that we just read, go back please to Daniel chapter eight and uh, 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 verse 13, right? Uh, he says here, the sanctuary will be trampled underfoot. I mean, the temple will be, uh, the temple will be um, dishonored, desecrated. The Gentiles will be trampling it underfoot so here he's asking, how long is this going to happen? And he gets the answer in verse 14, Daniel 8, verse 14. For 2,300 days, then, then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. So what is this 2,300 days? Right. So this 2,300 days, Days, the word days, and if you have a Bible that gives you the meaning there in the margin, it'll say mornings and evenings. That means 2,300, or rather not mornings, evenings and mornings. Right? The, the Jewish, they started from the evening, 6 p.m. till 6 a.m. So 2,300 evenings and mornings. That's half a day. So... 2,300 evenings and mornings, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Evenings and mornings, or mornings in evening, but it's correctly put as evenings and mornings, which is half a day. And therefore, you we say this 2,300 uh, evenings and mornings is 1,150 full days. Now, that means the sacrifices will be stopped and uh, the temple will be desecrated for 1,150 full days. Now, this fits into what we already know, that for a time, times and half a time, that is three and a half years or 42 months, which is about 1,260 days, or 1,275 days, uh, depending on how you calculate it. Uh, yeah, 365, 364 days. Uh, during that, so 1,150 is part of this 1,000, the three and a half, three and a half years. So in this three and a half years, the second half of the Great Tribulation, for 1,150 days, this is going to happen. Okay, so that's what is meaning here. How long is this going to happen? It's going to happen for, two, verse 14, 2,300 days, evenings and mornings. That means 1,150 full days, which is part of the three and a half years. Okay, and just some, you know, a, a other thing to keep in mind is in the Jewish calendar, they have only, uh, depending on the on the year, they have either 353, 354, 355 days per year. In the English calendar, we uh, either have 364 or 365 days in a year. They have, or 365.4 days in a year, but they have, you know, 
slightly less number of days in a year. Okay, so there is this variation you know, if you're doing calculation. But here, the numbers are very specific. 2,300 days, evenings and mornings, which is 1,150 days. That means during the second half, the three and a half years, which is a total of 1,000, approximately 1,260 days, so many days the temple will be uh, desecrated. So did you understand uh, Daniel 8, 13 and 14? Uh, well, you know, did, oh, is there any questions there? Is it, did you understand Daniel chapter 8, verse 13 and 14? When Daniel asks, you know, how long is the temple going to be trampled underfoot? That means it's the Gentiles are going to overtake it. Then he says, the angel says, for 2,300 days, which is actually evenings and mornings, half a day. So for full days, it's 1,150, which is part of the three and a half years. Is it clear? Any clarifications needed? Okay. Right. So then Gabriel, the angel Gabriel, uh, continues to speak here to Daniel. This is in verse 16, Daniel 8 and verse 16. And uh, he says uh, in, in verse 17, he says, Daniel 8, 17, understand son of man that the vision refers to the time of the end. So he's telling Daniel, I want you to understand this vision really you know, it has to do with the time of the end. I mean, this is towards the end times. So there, there is an immediate fulfillment, which is uh, the ram and the goat, the Medo-Persian Empire and the Greek Empire, which happened right after Dan, during and after Daniel's time. But then the part about the... Uh, uh, the little horn who is attacking the glorious land and so on has to do with the time of the end, Daniel chapter 8, verse 17. So he's saying, look, this has to do with the time of the end, right? So we, un we understand that in this vision that Daniel had in chapter 8, there is the near fulfillment, which has to do with the kingdoms that came right away. But there's also the part that has to do with the time of the end. And we can understand it, that it is from this little horn onwards. How? Because as we read on, um, uh, he says here in verse 20, Daniel 8, 20, he says, the ram is the kings of Medes and Persia which happened during Daniel's time. Daniel was alive to see that happen. Verse 21, the male goat is the kingdom of Greece and the large horn is the first king. That was the Greek empire. Daniel wasn't around, he had died by this time. But the Greek empire came, overtook the Medes and Persians. Alexander the Great came, he was the first king. So that happened right after Daniel you know, uh, the, the Greek Empire overthrew the Medes and the Persians. Then, verse 22, as for the broken horn of the four kings that stood up in this place, four kingdoms shall arise of that nation, but not with its power, which happened immediately after Alexander the Great was killed. His uh, region was broken, and uh, um, four kingdoms were established, but they didn't have the same power and influence as the Greek Empire. Then you see verse 23. Verse 23 begins like this. And in the latter time of their kingdom, so now he suddenly shifted time. He's gone from the near fulfillment, which was the Medes and the Persians, the Greeks, and the four regions that come out of the Greek Empire. He's gone from that to in the latter time, verse 23. So there's a time gap. 
Do you all see that? You're with me? Daniel chapter 8, verse 23. And in the latter time of their kingdom, that means of what's happening in this region, when the transgressors have reached their fullness, a king shall arise. That means this leader is going to arise, and we can recognize this leader as that little horn, which he had mentioned in verse 9 previously. Having fierce features who understand sinister schemes. So he looks fierce. He understands how to, you know, uh, in cunningness and trickery, he can control, take charge, do those things. Verse 24, his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. That means he's empowered by somebody else. And we know from the book of Revelation, he is actually empowered by the devil. He shall destroy fearfully. He will prosper and thrive. He shall destroy the mighty and also the holy people. So he's going to have, uh, you know, he's going to overpower people. Even those who are mighty, many, many people are very influential. He's going to take control of them. And the holy people referring to the Jewish people themselves, God's holy people. Verse 25, through his cunning, he shall call, cause deceit to uh, prosper under his rule. And he shall exalt himself in his heart. He shall destroy many in their prosperity. He shall even rise against the prince of princes. So he's kind of repeating what he had already told us here in uh, verse, verses 9, 10, 11 of chapter 8. In verse 11, he referred to saying he will exalt himself high as the prince of the host. Here in verse 25, he says he will rise against the prince of princes. That's the Lord Jesus himself. But he shall be broken without means or without human means. The word human has been into, uh, um, added there by the translators, but he's going to be destroyed supernaturally. Verse 26, and the vision of the evenings and mornings. So verse 26, you connect verse 26 back to verse 14. What was the word? What was that? Verse 14. He said, for 2,300 days. So it says days. And I said, well, that days actually is evenings and mornings. So you see that explained in verse 26 and the vision of the evenings and mornings. So that's why. Uh, we are saying here in verse 14, even he said 2,300 days, that word days is actually evenings and mornings, literally in, the he, uh, in Hebrew there. Uh, and it is reaffirmed in verse 26 when he specifically calls it the vision of the evenings and mornings. So evenings and mornings, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., half a day. That's why we say the full day means 1,150 days. The vision of the evening's morning, which was told is true, therefore seal up the vision, for it refers to many days. And the words in the future have been added, but it's correct. It says, look, it's, it's referring to something out in the future. Right? So in chapter 8, there is the near fulfillment of the Medes and the Persians, the Greeks, and the four uh, kingdoms that would come out of the Greek Empire, the near fulfillment. And then there is the far fulfillment, which is the future fulfillment, which had to do with that little horn or the, the king who speaks uh, against the prince of princes, uh, who's going to come forth and who's going to stop the sacrifices in the evenings and mornings at, and, and, and he's going to desecrate the temple. That is out in the future. Okay, that's chapter 8. And verse 27, Daniel said, I fainted and I was uh, sick for many days. I was astonished by the vision, but no one understood. That means obviously this vision was something that was very hard for him to understand. But thank God, you know, he made a note of, he wrote down, he recorded uh, all the things that he saw 
in the vision. And obviously at that time, for Daniel, it was too much to understand. What does all this mean? And uh, these are things that are going to happen. Uh, some of the things are going to happen now, but some of the things are going to happen in the time of the end, in the latter time. In, uh, so Daniel, like, what does all this mean? But he just recorded it for us. And that's what we're able to read and understand today. Okay. So chapter eight is extending things even further, Daniel chapter eight. So you can connect it back to chapter two, chapter seven, and chapter eight. More details are being given to us of what is going to happen. Okay. I hope all of you have um, followed me this far before we start off into chapter nine. Yeah, uh, any questions? Okay. All right, so uh, I see a comment in the chat. So I am, uh, I am assuming everybody is uh, fine. So let's move into chapter nine. Okay, so in chapter nine, uh, we're not going to read the whole chapter, uh, but I just uh, mentioned uh, the early part of the chapter, that means chapter 9, verses 1 to 19, uh, Daniel begins to pray. And he set his face toward God uh, to pray for his own people uh, and uh, to pray for he realized, uh, he, re he had read Jeremiah, the prophet's uh, prophecy, that there would be 70 years the Jews would be in exile, their land would be desolate. And now that 70 years was coming to an end, uh, Daniel is praying for his people. Uh, he is also, you know, uh, uh, asking, you know, in some way, repenting and asking God's forgiveness, God's mercy over his people. So Daniel is praying. And while he is praying and seeking God in this way, the angel Gabriel appears to him and begins to speak to him uh, concerning the visions that he had. Okay. So we are not going to read verses 1 to 19, which is Daniel's prayer. But we're going to pick up from verse 20, which is when angel Gabriel appears to Daniel and gives him additional information, additional prophecy about the end times. So let's start with verse 20. I would like us to um, just read through till verse 27 of Daniel chapter nine. I may I request each one to read, uh, yeah, two verses each, Daniel chapter nine, verse 20 to 27, two verses each, please. Now, while I was speaking, praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people, Israel, and presenting my supplication before the Lord, my God, for the holy mountain of my God. Yes, while I was speaking in prayer, the man, Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being cursed or play, 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 play reach it me about the time of the evening offering. Okay, someone else, verse 22, 23. And he informed me and talked with me and said, Oh Daniel, I am now comfort to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee that thou art greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. Okay, verse 24. I 
I'll read. Um, seventy weeks are determined for your people and uh, for your holy city to finish the transgression, uh, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. No, uh, therefore, and understand that. From the going forth of the <coughs> command to restore and build Jerusalem un until Messiah, the Prince, there shall be seven weeks and sixty-two weeks. The street shall be built again, and the wall, even in troublesome times. Okay. Last two. Come on. Come on, Aaron or Karen. Okay. And after the sixty two weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with a flood. And till the end of the war, desolations are determined. Then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of abomination shall be one who makes desolate, even until the consummation which is determined is uh, until, until the consummation which is determined is poured out on the desolate. Okay. So we need to understand what he's saying. So Gabriel comes to Daniel. All right, okay, Aaron has some problems with the mic, no pro no issues. Okay. So Gabriel comes to Daniel. So Daniel is praying, he's seeking God. And Gabriel says, you know, I've come to help you understand the vision. That means Daniel saw the vision, which we read in chapter 7, and then subsequently another vision in chapter 8. And the vision in chapter 8 uh, really troubled him. So Gabriel says, I've come to help you understand the vision. And then he begins to say, he starts off like this. We'll just uh, read verse 24, then we'll go for the break. He says, verse 24, 70 weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city. Says Daniel, I've come to talk to you about 70 weeks. Now we will explain the 70 weeks or 77s. But what I would just point out before we go for the break is, he says, for your people and your holy city. That means this, what I'm going, what Gabriel is going to talk to Daniel about has to do very specifically concerning the Jewish people and Jerusalem. Your people and your city. In other words, Whatever he has spoken from verse 24 to 27 primarily has to do with or concerns the Jewish people and the, their city, Jerusalem. Okay, so that's what he says. We will come back and discuss, I don't know, go into the details of the rest of what Gabriel said. Okay, so let's take a quick break now and we'll come back in 10 minutes and get into the same. Chapter 7, uh, chapter 9, sorry. Be back in 10 minutes. Thank you. <laughs> 